Space. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever in the world you happen to be today. Uh, I want to thank all of you for joining this open house. Uh, it's the first time we've really done an open house uh, really virtually like this. I think uh, virtual is really the norm for all of us um, over the past year. We're hoping to get towards that point where we'll be able to be in person here soon. Um, but we hope you and your families are all safe and well um, so that we can meet you in person here at a future event. Um, for today's open house, really, we're going to have a pretty simple structure here. Uh, I want to give a little bit of context on the project. And we just did a news announcement. I linked to it in the chat. Um, I would encourage you for the people who are attendees, um, please, if you want to introduce yourself in the chat, um, you know, let us know who you're from. Let us know some of your interests. That would be really great. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about the project, what's new. We have a great set of panelists that are joining us here today um, from a number of our member organizations, but also um, one of our mentees in the past here. And they're going to really help give you some insight of what the project's about, where the value has been for them, and um, why they see this as an important thing for the mainframe community. Um, and then we really want to open a lot of the questions to you and learn a little bit more about um, what questions you have about the project. It's no holds bar. We want to hear any questions and any feedback and anything you've ever wanted to know. We are a very transparent, open group, and we'd love to share. So the Open Mainframe Project, um, it's going to have its sixth anniversary here coming up, and it was created with the concept of being this focal point for open source in the mainframe. And you know, it's been an amazing six years here, um, and you can certainly see a lot of our presentations we've done on this, but I think one of the things that we're really seeing coming together is a focus of what our organization is about, what this community is about, and really where it's driving forward. And as I talk to folks in the Open Mainframe Project, these four belief principles are things that I just continue to hear here more and more. And I'm hoping this probably resonates with a lot of you in the audience too. You know, that leading or in organizations are leveraging their technology infrastructure as that competitive advantage. The mainframe design principles are really important to these organizations. And the key is, is how do we make all of this interoperable? And this is something that happens through open source. And I have the privilege of working with a lot of different communities from different technology sectors, different verticals and horizontals. And we see this over and over and over again. We're really achieving these huge opportunities and these huge things. It's not one organization. It's not one person. It's a group of people. It's a group of organizations that come together to make that possible. And this is what the vision is. We believe this is a thriving open source ecosystem. And together, it delivers that value such that that becomes the standard for open modern enterprise class systems, infrastructure, and applications in the mainframe. In other words, these the technologies that are put together here and built together here, they're the ones that are interconnecting mainframe back into that larger enterprise world. And this really aligns with exactly what the mission is of this project. Build that open source community and drive that adoption of open source in the mainframe by eliminating the barriers, demonstrating the value, strengthening the collaboration points, and really finding those open source project and efforts that help really align and drive that vision forward. And we've really done this very successfully here. And this is testament to the community that has come together in this project over the last nearly six years. 18 different projects and working group efforts have come together across the landscape of Linux on Z, COBOL, ZVM, ZOS, um, definitely with Zoe in there. We've seen just a really huge uptake and we've really seen this community come together in very unique ways. And these are the efforts that have come from it. Um, and you can learn more about all of these efforts on our website, openmainframeproject.org slash projects. And really most importantly, it's not just about having projects. It's not just about having people, but it's also about sustainability. And if I talk with anybody in the mainframe world, sustainability is the number one thing that is on everyone's mind. How can mainframe, a technology that is decades old and has decades of legacy and um, meat behind it, how does that carry forward from decades to come? And that's not just at the Open Mainframe Project, but the Linux Foundation as well. 
this is what we focus on. We enable sustainable innovation so that the projects and the areas we're focusing on, they're brought into the market through vendors and users. And those end users and vendors are contributing back into those projects to keep that circle going around. And the reality is, is the successful projects that come from here, it's because they're things that the market adopts and they're game changers to the market. And, you know, many of you are familiar with technologies like Zoe, and that's probably been the quintessential one really for this foundation here. Um, that's what we're here to do. We enable sustainable innovation. So we've got some cool things that we just announced today. I put a link in the chat there about a press release and a press announcement um, that we just did today. It's our quarterly announcement and, and really wraps up what's happened in Q1 and gives us sort of a look to the future here. The first thing is that we want to announce the Open Mainframe Summit, which many of you attended. It's coming back for 2021. Um, it's going to be a virtual event again, which um, we are saddened a little bit by, but I think the state of the world really sort of dictates that. But our aim is to be back in person in 2022. Um, this is a virtual event. It's going to be the end of September, the 22nd and 23rd. Um, and this event here, if you didn't, if you didn't take part in it last year, this brings together everybody in mainframe that has that focal point of open source. And it's really that intersection that's coming together. So last year we saw amazing talks from people that are building interesting projects on the mainframe that might be you know, looking at adopting broad open source in the mainframe, how businesses are looking at the intersection of open source in the mainframe. And we even brought in some outside speakers that really, really hit a lot of those points home. Um, everyone walked away with a really amazing experience as we're gonna do it again and even better um, this September. So keep this event on your radar. Um, we're gonna open the call for papers in a few weeks and the registration. In the meantime, if you as an organization um, see a lot of value in an event like this, there are sponsorship opportunities available um, and you can learn more at the link there below. We also recently announced amb our, our ambassador program. And the really the aim here is that there are some great individuals in our community that are just passionate about this technology. And this program is recognizing and enabling them. And if you look at the 10 names there, those are probably names that if you're um, around mainframe right now, you're recognizing and recognizing those faces there. And you're going to be seeing more of them in 2021. We're working with them to get them, you know, blogging more on social um, at events. If you're doing events and you really want a ambassador and someone great in the mainframe world, let us know. These are the people that you should be talking to and we can help make those connections. Um, so this is a really cool program we've got going here. We've also had a great announcement of some new momentum coming into the project. Um, we're really excited that ASG Technologies, EMC Software and High School Technology Services all have joined as members of the Open Mainframe Project. And this is really a big thing. And ASG and BMC are sure names that everybody recognizes in this community here, probably two of the largest, many of the largest vendors in the space. And I think it starts to cement that the large vendors in the mainframe world are seeing the future as open source and they're bringing this focal point together. We're also excited that two new projects we're announcing today. One is COBOL Check, and this is a unit testing framework for COBOL and is bringing test-driven development practices into COBOL. Um, this is definitely one you should check out if, you're, if your organization uses COBOL at all. This is a really interesting framework to pull in and they're working on bringing some interesting um, new technologies into there, such as mocks and really some of the more forward thinking ways of doing test driven development. So check that out. And Council Zio is a front end um, to ZVM and you know the provisioning of those systems there. And it provides a nice web interface. And um, we'll end up having hooks to some of our other projects over time as well. So I encourage you to learn more. You can learn about um, all of our press over the last um, several years there. And right at the top of the list is this one. Definitely go check that out. So with no further ado, I want to be the one to stop talking here, and I want to introduce a great set of panelists, and I want to leave it to our moderator today. This is a face you probably well recognize if you've been around mainframe, Stephen Dickens. Um, he not only is the worldwide sales leader of Linux One at IBM, um, it was his work that brought the open mainframe project out here in the first place. Um, so with no further ado, I want to turn it over to you, Stephen. Fantastic, John, and thank you for those kind words. It's a, it's a proud day when I see press announcements like this and the success of the project. So really what we've got here 
is a panel of some of the best and brightest with the mainframe community from really all of our key stakeholders. So what I'm going to do over the next few, few minutes is really just try and facilitate a conversation and I'll encourage those listening on the call to ask questions and, and I'll try and be your voice on the on the call here and really get those connected to our panelists. But if we can first go around the table and we'll go do that by the order that everybody's on the screen. So I'll come to you first here, Cameron. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and kind of how you're involved in the Open Mainframe project. Over to you, Cam, we'll go to you first. You there, Cameron? Looks like he's not there. Yeah, I think he's having some technical issues. He's having some technical, so you get to go first then, David, over to you, because you're next in line here. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> so, so, so my name is David Stokes. I'm senior director at Broadcom, and I lead our what we call our core products group. And my my role and involvement with the Open Mainframe uh, project goes to since its since its founding, Broadcom, and prior to that, CA was was a founding member um, at with the Open Mainframe project, uh, and and it extends to it, it impacts all of our products, not just traditional Linux on Z products and our offerings in that space. But as the program has evolved, as we brought on new products, it impacts everything with, with Zoe and, and extending the open source model to many of our products and the ability to, to integrate and to extend them to, to the open source community. Fantastic. Thank you, David. And thank you for your support from the beginning of the project. Another person who's been with us from the beginning, Glenn, can you just outline your role for the listeners here? Certainly. Hello, everybody. I'm Len Santa Lucia. I am the CTO and business development manager for Vicom Infinity, a IBM Platinum business partner. Uh, I am also the chair of the governing board for the Linux Foundation Open Mainframe Project. Uh, and I have, like Stephen said, been here since the inception of the project. And um, I really enjoy this uh, opportunity to work with everybody and see all these projects growing and coming in. Um, I also had a little time at IBM. I worked at IBM for 31 years before I retired and came to work for Viacom Infinity uh, for the last 13. Fantastic. Thank you, Len. And have you next, if you could just position your role and and how you're involved in the project. Sure, uh, hi guys, uh, great to be here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually the new guy. I, I'm actually only been involved with uh, mainframes for the last year. Um, I, I, I joined uh, IBM um, just under a year ago on a new role, which uh, it's open source uh, program manager uh, for the IBM Z organization. And, and my role is it's about advocating promoting the, the open source program, everything that has to do with, with, with open source software for, for the IBM Z platform, IBM Z and Linux One. Um, I, I hopefully I can bring some uh, different perspective. A lot of the things that, uh, that I've been talking for years, my, my background in open source is for, for about 12, 13 years, working directly uh, in open source software, contributing directly, and also as, a, as an offer, as a product manager in, in uh, monetizing open source uh, as well. So one of the first impressions that I got on the Open Mainframe project is like, well, this is really well organized and, and look at these projects and look at Zoe has all this great governance. So uh, um, I actually got a really, really great impression. And you know, hopefully we will talk about some of the good, good stuff that is happening and uh, it, it ha it's happening here. We have Len and John to thank for keeping us organized. Um, <laughs> Salasu, if you just want to tell the listeners a little bit about your role and, and where you fit and why you've been involved in the project. All right, so hello everyone. My name is Salasu Ali. So I'm a medical student actually, but I participated in OMP mentorship program in the year 2020. So I worked on the project SMF stroke RMF passing engine, which we simply like to call Zebra. So that's how I'm, I'm involved with this community. So thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for joining us late in the evening. So really appreciate it, Salsu. So 
just really to get the conversation going here, I'll just sort of really uh, kind of pick on a few people. So maybe, David, I'll get you warmed up that I'm going to pick on you first. You mentioned a little bit in, in your introduction. What, what does the project mean for a, a, a software vendor such as Broadcom? What's it meant to you and your organization to be involved in the Open Mainframe project over the last five or six years? So, so for us, the, it's, it's, it's about remaining relevant and the sustainability of, of the products and the direct, you know, of, of the, our products, the sustainability of the mainframe um, and, and the value proposition for, for the customers. By, by working with the Open Mainframe project, and especially through the Zoe project, that has given us opportunity with many of our products to integrate them with other vendors uh, in ways and, 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 land, and develop a set of open standards and behaviors. It enables us to integrate our products in ways that we were probably never going to be able to do if we didn't join and form a, an open source community. Um, it gives us the opportunity to engage customers, um, engage users, engage developers in a much more meaningful way and extend them into, into really a, a, the, the, the paradigm that people want to work in today. Open source is, is undeniable. And, and I think you know, bringing mainframe, it's new to us, even though the mainframe is, is one of the, has been around for, for many decades, open source is new to the mainframe and, and it's given us an opportunity to think and, and find new ways to, to extend our products and to, to engage users. So David, I'll pick on you again and ask a supplementary question. And for some of the other ISVs that are listening in, those mainframe vendors that maybe have been in this space, what would you say, what was the tipping point for, for CA and ultimately Broadcom to sort of join the project? What's been that kind of key value you've got from it that's, that you would recommend to others? I think it's, it's if you have, if you were, if you're not in the mainframe community and you have a technology that you think is relevant to some of the largest customers in the world, then extending the value proposition of that product to the mainframe makes sense, it may be a differentiator for your product or technology or offering. And then working, you know, uh, if, if I bring that to the open mainframe project and specifically the Zoe project, that, that gives you an opportunity to integrate that and work with vendors and people who know the technology and develop the standards and, and ways to integrate those things. So, so that becomes valuable to you as, a, as an ISV or, or, you know, technology vendor. And Len, I'll pick on you now with a question. A lot of the people on the call will be thinking kind of, why should I join? How's this going to help me? I've got a sales metric to hit. You know, my job's to talk to customers. My job's to grow the top line revenue. I, I know this is not obviously focused from a sales perspective, but how's that helped Vicom through your involvement in the project from purely just that sales lens? Well, actually... It has been quite helpful to uh, finding new opportunities uh, and helping shape um, open source software that normally would be ignoring the mainframe to pay attention to the mainframe, which then helps drive more business to the mainframe that otherwise might not have happened. So being part of that team to help shape what is to come is uh, a very important aspect of being a member of this uh, group. And, you know, if you are not the lead dog, the view never changes. And being able to lead and be able to help wherever it makes sense uh, for these projects, for uh, issues that arise, for uh, software vendors, uh, clients who don't believe. Speaking from this seat is a lot more credible at times than speaking from a vendor's seat. And also having those uh, resources uh, that are sitting alongside of me that you see here on this panel and those that are not here on this panel, uh, all working together and uh, rowing in the same direction. It really makes a difference as far as I'm concerned. 
That's a fantastic perspective on it. Javier, maybe going to you, you, you bring that open source perspective, that's your background. What are you seeing as that kind of role to how should people think about the level of commitment to get involved in this project? Do they need to be hands-on every minute? Can they step back, dip in once a month? You know what, just calibrate some of our people on the call here of kind of what the commitment and investment requires. Yeah, well, one of the things with, with open source is that uh, everyone feels really passionate about open source. Uh, developers that, you know, start small and, and they open source, uh, you know, just a small script, a library, uh, or a small tool, uh, they open it and, and they might get one or two or more uh, people using it, following or forking or, or just starting to to provide some feedback, right? And, and then next thing you know, you might have some pull requests asking you with recommending some improvements or some enhancements or, or bug fixing. So all of a sudden can, can really grow, um, uh, you know, it can, go, it, can go, it can grow really rapidly or you can manage that. When you become part of a, a, an open a foundation, if you become part of a open mainframe project, then you have a lot more structure, right? And that's the point where you know you you really have people from uh, different backgrounds, different perspectives, different companies that will go and, and and help out on on that project. So you know people can dedicate you know their hundred percent of their time on on a project, or they can work on their pers all personal time. A lot of the open source and actually an, an anecdote on that, a lot of the open source. Uh, happens on on your own time, right? Um, we were measuring a previous company. We were measuring uh, measuring the number of pull requests, and not only the number of pull, pull requests, but we were measuring the time at what time those were those pull requests were coming in, and we noticed that a lot of that was happening late at night and on weekends. And and I said, well, what's going on here? Well, it was just the passion for open source and people working on their own time. Uh, late at nights or on weekends, trying to to contribute to the to the project. So um, it, it gets it gets contagious. People get excited about it, and this is great, right? When you start collaborating and getting more feedback from for more uh, contributors. That gives me a perfect intro to you, Salasu. You've sort of come into the project recently through our mentorship program. Can you give us your perspective of what it's meant to be involved in the Open Mainframe project? Well, actually, from my angle, I would say it is nice to get involved with the community. The first part is as a student, in my own case, I normally worked alone, but when I started, I started working with my mentor. He was able to guide me through how to even get started, write good project plans and other stuff like that. And subsequently, there are other members of the community that came into the project. An example is uh, Len Santa Lucia who has been very helpful on the project that we are currently working on. So I think joining an open mainframe project is a very good uh, step in starting to build nice projects. Thank you. And this is I, project say is... I, Sorry, I just say really quick, if I could. You know, uh, with, a, with a mentee intern like Salasu, it was easy. I, um, I feel he's probably one of the best we've ever had come through the project under the internship program. And um, he just really uh, picked up the ball and ran with it. And um, Alex and I were just amazed on how, on how well and how, how well he adapted and learned everything and, and produced what he did in, in the project. So I, I had to say that because Salisu was very modest and I didn't want that to go beyond today. I think that's All been right, one thank of the, you. That's, that's great feedback, Salasu. I mean, I think that's yeah. been one of the key things throughout the project over the last few years, bringing through students and bringing and connecting students to the sort of ISVs and the vendors in the space yeah. and some of the clients. I mean, what value, say, I'll go to you, David, what value would you see in sort of that connection point between some of the students and some of the younger members of the community and them coming through and some of the connection points we've made, what would you see there? 
Well, I would say it gives us an opportunity to, to demonstrate to everyone, to customers, to our own internal management team, that it gives, you know, that anyone can learn mainframe, that you can work on this platform regardless of, uh, you know, of whether you've been, you don't have to have been around this for 30 years to be effective on it. That, that there is an exciting opportunity here to work. There, there are technology challenges and there are career opportunities. Yeah, Both with, within customer, it, it exposes, it exposes the, the, the mentees to opportunities at customers as well as within the ISVs. Yeah, I think that's, I think getting that pipeline of skills and talent's been sort of crucial for this platform over the last sort of five to 10 years. So making some of those connection points and having that happening in, in a community way, it certainly has been one of the high points for me in the project. John, I'm just thinking, have we got any questions? I mean, how, how long, where do we want to go from here? Is there anything particularly you wanted to highlight to the panelists? Yeah, no, I think it's, I think you're hitting it really good here. Um, you know, maybe a couple of things that um, it might be useful because I noticed some of the, the folks who are attendees, um, you know, they're not as sort of familiar with the, the workings of the project. Maybe they're considering other organizations getting more involved. Um, I guess maybe two questions um, for the panelists. What was, and whoever wants to take this first, what was that tipping point as you're looking into this community and you're seeing what it's all about and you're understanding sort of where the future of the present really, I don't even say the future, the present of the mainframe is open source. What was that tipping point for you? And then as you sort of look back and you, I mean, maybe for um, a few of you and I know David and Len, you were you know, very much involved since the early days here. What have you really seen as that really top benefit and maybe something that maybe even surprised you a little bit of, of getting involved with an effort like this? So I guess I, I can, I can jump on that. I think the, the tipping point, you know, when it started, it was focused on Linux and Z and then the, 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 the evolution to sort of the traditional ZOS software and the openness and readiness and, and willingness of the entire community, both customer and vendor to embrace open source, an open source model and build a community um, was surprising. And, and I think it's, 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 you know, I, I don't think there was I think vendors coming together was the tipping point. Um, I think we had all been circling the problem for a while, our, ourselves, Rocket, IBM, um, to start with. And now you see the, you, you see the other vendors in here as well, um, BMC and ASG joining most recently. Um, and we have MicroFocus as well. Um, and and there, I know there's a, a longer list of others that, that, have, that have engaged in this project. I think that's, that's really what open source is about is community and because and, there have been attempts at open source in the past before. Um, but I think this is really a recognition of, of a, a maturity of how to approach a project like this, committing engineering teams, building community around it, for engaging customers. It's not just push it out there and, and hope people come. There's real effort and, and, and meat behind it from all of the, the vendors, um, as well as a, a lot of the customers that are involved as well now. John, you set me up with a question that I'd like to flip back on to you. Um, maybe some of the listeners are thinking kind of, what, what is this thing? How is it structured? What are the main sort of working groups? Can, can you just give us a sort of brief overview of the various sort of centers of gravity within the project? You're on mute, John. And we're back. How about that? Um, <laughs> For, and the Open Mainframe Project, um, for those of you on the phone, you're very familiar with how um, Linux Foundation projects are set up. Um, you know, we certainly have a very open, vibrant, transparent technical community, which is led by our Technical Advisory Council, um, that really focuses on not just the technical direction, but also the projects and the working groups that are coming in and helping um, accept them, build a life cycle, make sure that they have the, the pieces needing to support them. Um, and continue to be a resource for them um, throughout time. Um, th all of the projects within the Open Mainframe project, and this is everything from Zoe to the projects we just announced today, they're all completely autonomous. Um, we don't get involved in any decision-making of them. Um, we provide the space for them to collaborate, um, and we provide 
best practices. Um, I work with all of these projects in a very hands-on manner to help ensure that they can be successful because oftentimes this is the first time some of these organizations have collaborated before um, in an open source way. So we try to, we try to go in there and bring our expertise um, as part of that. The other side of the house is the business side of the house. Um, and this is where um, corporate membership is a piece of that um, puzzle there. Um, you know, we have a governing board which really focuses on the fiduciary and budgetary side. We have a marketing committee which is focused on outreach um, and really being setting up evangelism um, for our projects. I and mean, we don't market the open mainframe project for the sake of marketing it. Our goal is to get the 18 hosted projects and working groups out there and out in front of the collective consciousness. Um, and we work tirelessly to make that happen. And um, many of these projects have just seen a lot of great uptick because of that happening. I mean, that's, that's part of what we look to bring here um, with the projects that we support. Um, but everything in the technical side of the community, if you're on the call and you just wanna understand how some of the projects work, you can go jump on any technical community meeting right now. Um, we have a TAC meeting in two days. Um, if you have technical folks that are really interested in that, that's something you join up, you can get more involved in and you can sort of learn about some of the workings that are happening there or any of the projects. Um, you know, when your organization's to a point where they're saying we are more interested in really making a statement for ourselves, that's sort of where the business side of the house is. And both of those sides work independently. One other one doesn't, op one doesn't report to the other um, at all. Um, they work, you know, autonomously, but they also work in conjunction with one another for sort of the best interests of the entire community as a whole. And it's so far for six years, it's worked out pretty darn well. John, maybe just sort of double click on that from a how, do, how does somebody get involved? What are the various sort of, I'm an individual contributor and I want to get involved. I'm a student, I want to get involved. I'm looking after the corporate interests of my sort of company and I want to get involved. Kind of talk me through those various tiers and, and kind of how do I get involved? For the, we've got a few sort of new people to the project still on the call. How would they get involved? So the easiest way, if you want to check out any of the projects that we have, go to openmainframeproject.org slash um, projects here. And since um, I have my screen up, actually, um, I'll just bring this up here in front of everybody so you can just see this live. Um, this here is a list of all of the projects and working groups that you know we currently have out here. We have landing pages. You can learn about each one of them, what they're about, what they're um, focuses on, you can get access to their mailing list, their GitHub, all those pieces where their Slack channel is in the open mainframe project Slack. All of their communications, all the proceedings completely open. So you can go check it out. Um, many of these projects also hold very regular meetings and all of those are completely open too. So that's an opportunity you can jump on one of those calls and just learn about what's going on, introduce yourself, you know, talk about maybe what's of interest to you in this area. Um, all of that, any individual contributor can take a part of. And that's that we see is usually the easiest way to kind of get started is just explore, learn, use, and just, you know, get involved. Um, the other half of it is, you know, as your organization, you know, if you're part of an organization and you're starting to see, hey, there's a couple of different projects that are becoming really important to us. Maybe we're using them as a part of our products. Maybe uh, we're using them internally as a company. Maybe we just see them just really valuable over there. Um, then, you know, that's an area um, where you can learn a little bit more about what corporate membership um, is all about there. Um, and that is another area on our page here as well, which I'll bring up here. And it walks through just kind of some of the benefits and what that looks like. Um, not only the open mainframe project, but also, you know, you get to be part of the larger Linux Foundation member family as well. And that has a number of amazing benefits um, in addition to it. So those are really, I think the two big paths. I really always, when I talk with folks, I encourage them check out the projects first. You know, get involved with it. I mean, it's the, you, can, you, you don't like to refer to it as the try before you buy, but really this is what the most important thing is that we see here. And if your organization then sees um, these really valuable, the investment at the membership is often sort of what comes from that. I don't know if that sort of hits after where you're going at there, Stephen. Yeah, exactly, John, exactly. So um, can I add just one thing there, uh, Stephen? And, and what yeah, go ahead. Say, go for it. This is open. I yeah. love I get this question a lot, especially when I go and, and talk to other open source communities, you know, and I talk about, you know, them extending to 
to to our platform, right? So not just to make it available on on x86. And and then the the the, the question that I'm getting a lot is, well, but I don't have access to a mainframe. Right, and that's another area where we can help here. Right? Yes, and that's that's a big piece, and and um, you know, we we can definitely facilitate that. And if they are want to open source their project, we we can help them with with that 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 aspect. And and I get that question a lot. And I said, well, look, we that's have an open point. mainframe project. We can definitely help. Yeah, we help get mainframe access for all of the projects that are hosted here, whether it's Z Linux, um, whether or it's ZOS, which I know is. Um, can be a challenging one because of just getting access to the hardware and pieces like that. So all of our projects, um, we have great partners in the community, Marist College, Viacom Infinity, and a number of other folks that step forward and they volunteer some of their infrastructure for us to use and our projects to use. Um, and that's what we see is often just a tremendous value for these projects because you're exactly right, Javier. The, sometimes the hardest thing is getting um, access to the hardware and that's something we can help with. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, Lynn, you've done a lot in that space with giving people access. Do you want to sort of double click on the points that John's just made there and, and sort of maybe expand a little? Sure. You know, uh, folks, I think, John, what do we got? Like about six or seven of them now on our Z? Yeah, I think about that many, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, some of them are on ZOS, some of them are on Linux on Z. Uh, and, you know, they have access to it you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And uh, it really makes it a, a big difference for them because uh, they don't have to go hunting that, that kind of stuff down. And a few of the guys on the team volunteer and help them if they have a user uh, ID problem or, um, you know, a little technical problem. It's usually pretty good. It, it, it's really working out pretty well. And um, I have seen uh, people who were really struggling trying to find some place, now able to get some real work done. And it has made a difference for their projects and uh, advancing the project uh, to becoming something in a way of very useful open source to the community. So Stephen, it's been uh, very satisfying. And also some of the students, like Salsu, you used our Z, right? Didn't you? Yes, With, uh, Alex? I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, another thing with uh, some of the interns, such as Salisu, giving them access and getting actually having real system experience like that. My goodness, um, at this point in my life, is probably one of the most important things I can do is helping bring on the new people to Z uh, and doing it uh, with real hands on. You know, this, you know, that wasn't really possible. Uh, not too long ago. So, uh, and pr probably one of the most uh, heartwarming and satisfying things is working with the interns and seeing them fly away into some very nice positions. I know Dr. Cameron Say would be jumping on that right now if he wasn't having some technical issues here because uh, uh, we talk about that all the time. He uh, helped teach the uh, stuff like COBOL in his classes at ECU and so on, uh, leveraging the Maris system. So I hope I answered your question, Stephen. You do, you do as always, Lynn. Thank you very much for that. I mean, I'm conscious, John, we've got a couple of people here. That I wonder whether there's any sort of questions from the group that are still with us. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to look. And again, if you have questions um, and you're in the audience there, um, I know we're rattling on here a little bit. Um, you, you got some passionate people, um, but please add uh, questions here into the chat. Um, we can relay those off to the audience um, and sort of let them know, um, you know, potential ways we can help here. One thing maybe I just always like to get a little bit of an insight, um, and, and I guess, David, I want to pick on you all at Broadcom. Um, I mean, I know you you have teams and teams and teams that are working on Zoe, and I know one of the, the big pieces in there was transitioning some of your de development methodologies and working in more of that open format. Um, and I know that's actually then, since Zoe, that's actually turned to more of a focal point for you all. Um, what is, just kind of give a little insight, is there might be some folks in the audience that are thinking, oh, geez, we develop products internally, like, you know, and now we're going to start working in the open. Like, is that, 
what is that like? Is that a huge deal? Is that a no deal? Um, tell us, can you give us a like insight of just good things, bad things, you know, some of what you've seen? So, so the good things, you know, it, it exposes people to other, other people on other teams and other companies, other ways of thinking, um, other, other ways to approach a problem. Uh, and, you know, there are a lot of smart people that work for many of these companies. So it gives you the opportunity to work with some of the best and brightest, not just within your own organization, but collaborate with them. Um, and there is a true sense of community and collaboration that exists around these projects. Um, I don't think anybody really comes to it with a, with it's my way or the highway. You can't come to it that way, regardless of the size of your organization or, 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 or the influence that we found, you know, working with IBM, with Rocket, and, and many of the other, other vendors on here and, and other partners have been very collaborative, regardless of where we started in our, our journey on, on it. So I think that has been really, really one of the, the exciting things. They, they've been proud to work on the pro project. You know, it, it's public, it's visible. Um, they're proud to make their, their commits to it um, and, and engage with all the other it gives other kinds of leadership opportunities as well for, for the individuals that are involved. Um, it's, it's something to really talk about and because people will understand what open source is more so than mainframe, what mainframe is at times. So, so it's, it's, it's even more, provides even more common ground for them um, to talk about their, their, their journey and their career. Um, you know, on, on the negative side, it's it's almost the the mirror image of of all this great thing you're working with other people, but it means you have to to compromise and you have to collaborate and you don't get everything you want. So yeah, we may have engineering teams that we can direct and, and have them build a certain way and, and do things a certain way, use specific tools or standards. That you know, but there will have to be compromises. Um, and, and but the nice thing is when when you make those compromises and built right and it's designed properly, that's going to make its way through all of your products, and then that becomes the standard. So so it's 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 an evolution, and it's been a lot of fun. And that's I mean, David, David, there's one sort of thing in what you're saying there that I think is worth in expanding. Obviously, you know, pick on just our organizations, IBM and Broadcom, we compete fiercely in this market. But then we jump on calls like this and we're collaborating together. How does that be dynamic being sort of fierce competitors, one minute collaborators on a project and working together the next? How does that sort of dynamic work? Uh, we, we, we've lived it since we've been on the platform, uh, <laughs> you know, even back in the CA days. I mean, that, from, from its birth. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, it just is a, a reflection of, of what the market has always been to us. So, so maybe as IBM, that was new to you. <laughs> Good one. Good one. I like it. I suppose I set myself up for that with the fierce competitors comment. So I'll take that one. But no, I mean, I think, I mean, the, the piece that's been interesting for me there is just watching the Zoe community come together. We all compete for that mainframe tools kind of space fiercely with our commercial offerings. But watching Zoe grow up over the last two or three years as a project and you know, the, the collaboration, you see the panels, you see the people presenting at share and the various events together. I think it for me is kind of the proof of the pudding, if you will, around the project that there can be a panel with Rocket and with um, Broadcom and with IBM and with some of the new members that are coming in. You know, we can all be there talking proudly about the Zoe project and how you know, that's coming forward. So, I mean, that's been the big thing for me, for sure. Would you agree, David? I, I agree because it, there's no, and I don't feel like it's fair, you know, you, you look at a product in, within your organization and you say, oh, our team built that or our group built that or an individual built that. Around Zoe, there is a genuine sense, you know, it's not, hey, we built this. Regard, you know, it, this is a really a, you know, as a community, as a group, we, this is, this is a shared effort. Um, and that is something special and unique that I, I don't think exists in traditional software projects within within you know your, an organization or or or, or vendor. Um, the, it is something special about collaborating and 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 giving you know giving birth to this. I think that comes through for me that kind of general community view. Javier, you, you you want to add something there potentially? I was I was just going to add another huge benefit is that when you are coding in the open you try to do a good job because your code is out there, right? And Mary Salisu can confirm that. 
our developers, developers, and we're talking about here Zoe, right? Developers from three companies or more, they don't, they don't want to look bad. They want to look good with their code, right? And nicely coded, nicely uh, integrated, and they put an effort. And I actually had experience where, where we had, you know, closed source code and we were getting it ready to open source. And I was like, why is it taking so long? That's because everyone was making their best efforts to make it look really, really good before they open their code, right? Uh, maybe Salisu uh, Sal can comment on that, but you definitely improve your, your as a man, if, if anyone here is, is a manager and has developers working for, you know, believe me, you open source and they're gonna do a much better job. <laughs> do you agree with that, Salisu? Did you sort of have to up your game coming into an open source community like this, did you think? Yes, actually, what he said was right. So you do a good job. And at the same time, you're looking at those that are trying to contribute. You're comparing their skills with yours. Uh, there will be a, a point whereby you definitely need to upgrade your own skills. Like currently, I'm working on an incubator project. So we are working together with other developers that are more professional than I am. So I'm trying to study more and catch up with the game. So that's absolutely true. Yeah, this, uh, that transparency leads to everybody having to up their game, I would imagine. Yes. So, John, have we got any other questions? I want on a different view here. Is there any other questions coming through? Where do we want to? I, I have not seen as many other questions coming through. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna kind of pose another one of mine here on the audience. And, and, and Javier, I kind of look at you because this is something we've been uh, collaborating a little bit on is looking at sort of this landscape of open source that supports the mainframe here. And um, I would encourage if you get a chance, I mean, head to this URL or landscape.openmainframeproject.org. What's really fascinating about this is this has been a growing landscape over the last six years. And not only have we just seen um, folks within the community, you know, I can look at projects here like OpenStack and Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry and, and many of the Hyperledger technologies as we've had direct impacts but then also we've seen secondary impacts from many of our members who have then um, with this project, with this effort, then use this as an opportunity to step forward. So it's not, you know, it's not just a, you know, we're, we're building sort of our own yard here in our own garden, but we're out there trying to help all of these other communities that are seeing this platform to being able to leverage it. And um, I don't know, Javier, if you want to speak to any of that. Yeah, and this is, this is very close to, to my heart because I've been uh, trying to promote uh, you know, our platform, the mainframe, so S390X uh, across all communities, right? And, you know, we have great, great uh, uh, projects. I mean, Zoe, the, the one example where you can use Zoe to integrate with so many other things, right? Uh, but also to invite all these open source software to, to be multi-platform. And I, I try to position it like that, right? So don't, don't just make your software available for one platform. Try, try the others. And by the way, uh, here with the mainframe, we have the largest enterprises in the world using that this platform, and and it just keeps growing, right? This this is just a small representation of the available open source software that runs on on IBM Z and, and Linux One. Uh, yes, the majority here are more on, on Linux uh, than than ZOS. Uh, and I have a few more there. I'm, I've been trying to, for the last couple of months, to add more logos here. I have a list. I believe there are like 97, 98 logos. I have a, a, at least another 12 to 15 that, that I'm going to add that I now can confirm that, you know, it, it's available. It works. In some cases, every version of the open source software already comes with the, with the build available for, for, for the mainframe, which is great. Right. In some cases, you know, it, it just works. Uh, some of the work that has been done, you probably heard about all this um, uh, hybrid cloud and trying to containerize everything. So a lot of the work that has been done to 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 have all everything that runs on containers, everything that runs uh, with Kubernetes, OpenShift, and so on, uh, that also has helped us to to bring more more software to to the mainframe. Right, so adding things like Knative, uh, that that it's for serviceless. Well, it now runs and it has been tested, and it's you know it's going to be offered. Uh, uh, There's going to be even a commercial offering at some point very soon. So uh, I'm you know 
going out there on the communities and I keep inviting everyone working and, and giving it a try. And, you know, going back to my previous point on, on giving, ac giving them access to the infrastructure, uh, you know, we try to facilitate that so, so we can keep increasing this. And by the way, every time I show this, what you're seeing there on the screen, most people, uh, most people are uh, surprised. It's like, oh, I didn't know that we had all this stuff uh, available, right? So, so I think it's, it's good and it's gonna continue to grow. Absolutely. And all these folks are directly and directly supported by the project. And if you out there have an open source project that you're working with or working on a port of, let us know because we have resources here to help you get it upstreamed and all those bits. But um, yeah, it's really good stuff. Anyways, back to you, Stephen. No, I mean, it's a good point to mention. We talked about technical resources before. We talked about system access. We talked about like-minded individuals who can sort of help you with the task of onboarding code. So if any of the people still out there and listeners of, you know, wanting to onboard their code onto a mainframe, you know, there's certainly a community of people here who can help. But I think we've kind of hit all the big topics here, John. So I'll kind of pause just quickly if there's any last minute questions and ramble a little bit to let people type. But I think we've covered today kind of what the project's about, what the various stakeholders get from being part of this project. If you've got any questions after this session and you are wanting to know more, uh, myself and John are always a good sort of entry point into the project. We can get you connected. Um, our details are out there on the project and, and John's probably as good a focal as any. Um, so we're happy to onboard you and get you connected to the right resources. Um, but thank you very much for your time. Really great to talk to you. If you wanted to learn more about the project, openmainframeproject.org is where you go first. Um, and then obviously connect with us and get involved and get involved in those technical projects, as John mentioned, is probably a good place to start. So, so John, I'll hand it back to you to kind of wrap us up. Absolutely. And I just want to thank all of our panelists, thank the people who came here today. Um, you know, we're going to record this, we'll share this out with um, the folks here. And if you attended, you'll get a follow up email with details on that. Um, if you're looking for some quick call to actions and just things that just research a little bit more and learn about it, I mean, open mainframe project.org, start there, look at our projects page. Um, and obviously, if you're in an organization, you're seeing this as something valuable. There's opportunities um, to join from an organizational point of view. And again, those are things you can you know, contact us and you can actually even pursue the whole um, process right there online um, as well. But with that, I really want to thank everyone. This was uh, kind of fun. It was a new thing we've done here. We're hoping to do a few more of these here in the future. Um, and I just want to thank both the panelists for taking their time, Stephen, for doing, as always, a great time, a great uh, job moderating, not just great time moderating, but great job moderating. Um, but for all of you um, who stuck with us, we had a few people early on, and I think um, some folks had to drop, but it was great seeing everyone. And we look forward to seeing everyone hopefully soon in person. Um, with that, take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot.